seruan wawasan negara unggul di mata dunia langkah seiring mengejar cita di hari muka kan terus maju bersama Hi and a very good afternoon everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and stay safe wherever you are. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Wan Izian, an alumna from Faculty of Business and I will be your moderator on today's webinar on Hacking Your Life Direction. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to our second alumni Vite series. Thank you for joining us and being here today. This talk is among our monthly series which will be streamed live on MMU Malaysia YouTube channel and Multimedia University Facebook page. Feel free to like our page, leave a comment, tag and share our Facebook live with your friends and family. Ladies and gentlemen, with us our Honourable Pemata Dunia, Mr. Dinesh Ganisan, who is a graduate from Faculty of Business in the class of 2016 and also a Technology Risk Management Consultant. Here also we have Mr. Justin Wong, who is a former graduate from Faculty of Management, class of 2021, and also the founder of Red Square. Red Square, sorry. Hi, Mr. Dinesh and Mr. Justin. Thank you for being here today. So before we begin our topic, uh, Mr. Dinesh, do you mind share with us uh, about your background and experience that you have before becoming a risk management consultant? Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. um, I started on my journey in MMU. So whilst I was studying one day, I realized that, you know, we are adopting the accounting software. And because of that, I was wondering what's the next step, mm -hmm. right? So because of that, the next step was to see 
how you transition from manual accounting to um, digital, uh, I would mm -hmm. say, the digital world. So b as I was going through then MLM, MMLS, mm -hmm. yeah, MMLS, right? Yeah, yes, correct. Yes. So MMLS, <laughs> <laughs> so MMLS uh, popped a certified ethical hacking paper. Mm -hmm. So when I went there and I approached a lecturer, so the lecturer told me, why not you tr give it a try, mm -hmm. which I did. And it served me well on securing my first job at BDO Malaysia mm -hmm. as an IT auditor back then. So uh, close to three years, two years plus to three years, mm -hmm. I was there. Uh, it has taught me a lot of good experience there. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I transitioned to MBank. So the job scope is different because now we have IT audit. So IT mm -hmm. audit is booming as we speak. Mm -hmm. I think it's been there for some time, but it's booming. Mm -hmm. And then now we are going into now, now I'm in technology risk management. So from an auditor, now we are an internal consultant in the bank. So that's it. Okay. Uh, what about you, Mr. Justin? Could you share with us uh, what experience do you have before you founded uh, Red Square? Right. So right after my university, uh, right after my high school, in fact, mm -hmm. I didn't go to university straight. I took a gap mm. year going into mm. business, working for PayPal and things. And after a year of gap year, I feel like I'm pretty lost. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I, I can't do this alone. I have to find a partners and things. Mm -hmm. That kind of got me into university mm -hmm. and I got into MMU do with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, took on the foundation of business and then went on to accounting as degree. So I was um, in both Malacca and Cyberjack campus, mm -hmm. right? So during my journeys in universities, I always wanted to know more and learn more to pursue into entrepreneurship journey, mm -hmm. right? I started my first business in uni with some of my classmates and my lecturers. Uh, finger cross, I mean, business didn't go too well. Uh, but then also I didn't quite give up from there. I made my second partners and then that's where we started and founded Red Square Software together. I see. Okay, I find it interesting mm. as both of you uh, <laughs> were students from business <laughs> yes. background and to yeah. venture into technical field uh, for your career. So uh, do you mind share with us uh, what drives you to join the technical field? Um, Mr. Justin? Could you yeah, uh, it's not the first time being asked the questions. <laughs> people <laughs> think from accounting <laughs> to events. I mean, my relative, my parents and people are asking mm -hmm. me the same thing. Right, uh, for me, it's always been my passionate uh, mm -hmm. in high school, ever since high school, uh, from three and things that I was starting building some websites and things with my friends mm -hmm. and things. So it's always been my passionate in technology field, right? Mm -hmm. So when I go into business, uh, I know that I need to have a solid fundamental mm -hmm. to run a business, even a technology business, I need to know the most basic skills, mm -hmm. accounting, right? Like Mr. Tony Flanders run Asia. Mm -hmm. He don't know how to drive a plane, mm -hmm. right? But he know accounting, and mm -hmm. that's what making uh, Asia thriving now, mm -hmm. right? So that's for me. It's really about my passions. Yeah. I see. Okay, uh, Mr. Dinesh, uh, yes. how would you say being a business graduate <laughs> helps you to join the technical field? Uh, well, for starters, uh, I w observe the changes around mm -hmm. me. Like um, MMU was one of the things where the mm -hmm. transition of no more submitting assignments mm -hmm. <laughs> manually. We had mm -hmm. to do it online and all that. Mm -hmm. So then I started looking at through our subjects like accounting information system where we have to see accounting software that can do your balancing for you. Mm -hmm. So as then I was wondering what if we are being replaced? Mm -hmm. You know, the skill set can be replaced, but humans nature is to be adaptive. So because of that, I told myself, you know what, just try and then just keep finding a way. And that's when, again, I told you, I f came across the ethical hacking set and then I made it relevant. I seek guidance from our lecturers. I mean, mm -hmm. MME do have an industry experience lecture, I would say. They are very seasoned in it, so they know what they're saying. So even they told me, yes, you're in the right direction. It may take time for a jump start, but just go mm -hmm. for it. So I just took and next thing I knew, I started off my internship as an external auditor, finance. Mm -hmm. But finance is boring a bit, la. <laughs> so t honestly to me. So then uh, I applied to BDO, uh, one of the top five or firms in Malaysia. And then the partner and the team, a very good team of them, they actually gave me a chance. So I just took the experience and I said, you know what, just go for it. La. What's the most I can lose? So I went and then here I am today. Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, what are the skills that you guys acquire during your university life? Uh, Mr. Uh, Dinesh, could you share with us? Okay, when you say skills, in mm -hmm. general skills or what? Uh, yes, general skills. For Maybe start you can share with the students okay. who are watching this. Okay, for starters, the skill that I felt which was very important, going to your class on time. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it's very important. Um, 
number one and then number two would be listening to people mm-hmm. and not only listen you have to ask questions mm-hmm. so don't be afraid to ask questions right mm-hmm. uh, ask the right questions but at the same time you can ask skill set number three make friends mm-hmm. um, I am here today because of uh, I mean still long way to go but many friends I made along the way uh, my campus friends that even he is my friend we actually met during a mm-hmm. event so so many of us gathered together today is because mm-hmm. of friendship Uh, my housemates were part of a main contributory factor. My schoolmates especially, mm-hmm. my family. But of course, if campus-wise, everyone were family. I see. So I that's I a skill, uh, networking. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, what about you, Mr. Justin? I what think are these skills? I strongly agree with what mm-hmm. Mr. Dinesh has mentioned here. Mm-hmm. It's about the friends, networking, mm-hmm. talking to people, mm-hmm. and going to class on time, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. So I think that's a lot of resources mm-hmm. in MMU. And you mm-hmm. pull our resources on the students. Mm-hmm. But students need to learn about being resourceful, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Connecting resources together, being it... Uh, I think university is the best time to start a journey. I mean, mm-hmm. being it uh, going for different certifications and things, mm-hmm. like exploring your routes, but also starting a business. This is where you have the most time, freedom, the freedom of money and things like that. So I think going to universities, getting ourselves resources, being resourceful mm-hmm. is really important. Okay. Right. So uh, before we dive in deeper into our discussion, uh, let us watch the updates of our Pemata Dunia on a segment called Apa Khabar Pemata Dunia where our alumni share uh, about their current news and current job. So if you want to share your stories with us, feel free to check our Facebook at Pemata Dunia. Gas apa berlaku kat menu ni? Ada berlaku sedikit penggambaran. Uh, penggambaran filem pendek untuk multimedia universiti lah. Uh, Jalan cerita dia macam-macam genre ada. Ada empat short film yang saya sedang um, lakukan penggambaran. Uh, yang kita tengah berada di set ni lah satu penggambaran untuk genre horror. Uh, dia macam-macam genre lah. Dia tak semuanya horror. Dia ada komedi, ada horror, ada aksi, ada drama, family. So yang ini tajuk dia, uh, nanti aku buat. <laughs> untuk alumni MMU, uh, keep continue support. MMU, walaupun maybe dah ada dekat luar, dah berjaya apa semua, jangan lupa asal-usul datang balik, contribute apa yang boleh untuk ialah, membantu anak-anak murid generasi yang akan datang untuk memajukan lagi minda-minda generasi yang baru dan juga secara tak langsung menaikkan lagi nama MMU di Pesada Dunia Welcome back, I'm in line Cut! Alright, got it Okay Hello, my name is Ashwin Tanakaran and I am a Deputy Public Prosecutor with the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs. I graduated from Mountain Bay University in the year 2016 and was called to the bar in the year 2017. I enrolled myself to do LLB in MMU in the year 2012 and I graduated in less than four years. And I have to tell that in that four years it has been, it is probably still one of the best years few years that I've had in my entire life. The reason being is because I can remember very vividly how much all of our lecturers has individually enhanced us, always knew where to mold us to become not just graduates, but to become good lawyers. In my very first year of joining MMU, I failed my midterm in Malaysian legal system. Reason being was not because I did not know the law, no, I didn't understand my subject, but it was more because of how I didn't know how to answer or more so about writing a legal essay. Right after failing my midterm, I was called upon by my lecturer who then told me, Ash, do you know why you failed? This is why. He sat with me and he told me, why my essay was not exactly how it's supposed to be, it being a legal essay and how it should be. And from then on, I have not failed any midterm or any papers. And since graduating MNU, I have been enrolled with the service, um, with the Attorney General Chambers, 
And in the year 2017, I was appointed as a Deputy Public Prosecutor for the State of Slango. And in the year 2019, I joined Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs as a Deputy Public Prosecutor as well. Now, my four years in MMU, I have um, done multiple, supervised multiple activities and also multiple events. I have been, um, been in different roles, whether it was in terms of being the president for the event or secretary or even any part of it at all. And all of this, MMU has shaped me to become well, I guess to become the person that I am today, it has given me the confidence to go in court, to talk and to be the DPP that I am supposed to be, that I am today. And with all of that, thank you so much MNU for all the great times, for all the good times, for all the good knowledge that you have bestowed into me. <laughs> with that, thank you very much and I wish the best of luck to the new students who will be enrolling into MNU and let me assure you it's going to be the best of your four years. Hi, my name is Adiba Mayra Binti Yusuf and I studied at Multimedia University under the Faculty of Applied Communication. So Alhamdulillah, upon graduation, I landed upon a position as a Branding and Communications Executive at MSIG Insurance Malaysia Berhad at its Kuala Lumpur Head Office. So MSRG is a general insurance company and I've been working uh, at this company for about a year plus plus since um, November 2019. So a little something about my position at MSRG uh, as a branding and communications exec executive. I do an assortment of tasks from managing the company's social media account, developing um, marketing collaterals such as brochures and leaflets, um, reviewing press releases, compiling annual reports, and so many more. So working at MSIG is not exactly glamorous, but I love it. I love it so much. Um, the job requires me to be meticulous, to be creative, to manage my timeline well, and I have to learn as much as I can as I go along. Lastly, I would like to address my fellow alumni and also to those of you who are still studying at MNU. I know the past year has been absolutely challenging for all of us, but I hope you stay strong and I wish you all the best in your future undertakings. Good luck and all the best. Hi everyone, welcome back to our live talk. So now we have entered the second session of our discussion and we will discuss deeper on hacking your live direction. So let's start with you, Mr. Justin. Uh, can you tell us more about your business, which is uh, Red Square? Yeah, hi. So Red Square is a custom software development company. Mm -hmm. So, but what makes Red Square different from the other custom software development companies is that we don't just take in the client's requirements, giving them quotations, they go for prices, and then just get our programmers to code, right? Mm. So Red Square comes in a different approach. We kind of come in like a consulting in terms of technologies. So usually clients come to us with a problems, mm -hmm. right? They have problems they want to solve with modern technologies. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be mobile application, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be website application, but sometimes even we can write simple scripts or maybe even using Excel. So really result oriented mm -hmm. that what we're doing here, solving the problems for the businesses. Mm -hmm. right? That's what makes Red Square really unique. And mm -hmm. that's how with a small team, we manage to grow so fast. I see. Okay, uh, and Mr. Dinesh, can you share more about your career and job scope? Okay, for starters, um, technology risk management mm -hmm. uh, is something new, but mm -hmm. of course a few years ago already. Mm -hmm. So what we do is within the bank, we are more towards the second line of defense. Mm -hmm. So in an organization, a financial institution, there's and other companies there's three lines, mm -hmm. which is the first line, the second line, and the third line. Mm -hmm. Third line is auditors. Mm -hmm. Second line is us. First line is all the frontliners in the bank, like mm -hmm. all those who deal with your deposit cash, mm -hmm. all your issues and all that. The other ones. So there's many to it. Mm -hmm. So what I do is example, uh, like we have a lot of technologies in the bank. I think you're aware that we are going through a massive change of 
payment payment mm-hmm. transitioning i would say mm-hmm. okay more or less so because of that you need to implement more technology inside so before you roll it out to the common users mm-hmm. we got to test it out mm-hmm. to make sure that one they are well informed and they are safe mm-hmm. and many other factors inside so with that in mind i would say we would do the testing of it and not testing we would do assess it mm-hmm. so did they, they do all this did they uh, check example a uh, online payment mm-hmm. so you get your tac number and all mm-hmm. that right mm-hmm. so many of them don't understand uh, as you can see one of the best example is that mm-hmm. um when the tac number you reveal the tac number mm-hmm. that's it the bank can can't do anything mm-hmm. if the scammers call you but then they'll say the bank doesn't do the job Mm-hmm. Ah that's where you're wrong actually the bank does it they actually mm-hmm. inform you through the ATM machine mm-hmm. and through the login page of your <laughs> I, mm-hmm. you know yeah. but sadly mm-hmm. yes yeah, you're thinking <laughs> because sadly everyone focus on the login credential yeah. they don't look around the bank the bank mm-hmm. invests money on the information mm-hmm. like okay this this is do not reveal but they don't read that they focus on keying their username and then the password <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the bank is trying to educate us as more like mm-hmm. through automated messages you get your sms mm-hmm. and like how mkn sends us good morning text <laughs> and all that so that's what we do we also try to assess it in a way where we provide or increase customer mm-hmm. satisfaction and con- confidence mm-hmm. at the same time we deliver our best and that's with the help of the entire bank itself from the first line to the last all of it It's very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, as we all know, accounting and IT are two different fields. Uh, and my question is, how does your training uh, and studies in business help you to manage a technical job, uh, especially Mr. Dinesh? Oh, okay, I'm the first <laughs> one now. Uh. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question back. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you say detour, do you mm-hmm. think it's detour or do you think it's adapting? Okay, I think it is uh, adaptive because technology is revolving. Mm. So many students need to adapt to the changes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would say not only students I would go for a bigger concept mm-hmm. so all of us are students in general mm-hmm. even after you leave campus so I would not use the word detour for myself mm-hmm. I would say adapting mm-hmm. because if you can adapt from watching phone youtube from your laptop to your phone today mm-hmm. then we can adapt to anything mm-hmm. so I would say that it's important to adapt so mm-hmm. you have to go according to it and as technology evolves So mm-hmm. have you. So when you buy something you need to know like buying your coco crunch. Mm-hmm. Before you buy you got to know the sugar content whether it's suitable for you. Same anything. So that's my take on it. Okay. Yeah. I see uh, and Mr. Justin how does your training uh help you to own a startup, right? Mm. Uh, uh there is more to technical field. Yeah. So for me I mean like for starter as well I mean like uh, mm-hmm. I never foresee myself to be an accountant mm-hmm. right, you know professional <laughs> accountant I don't <laughs> know <go to> <laughs> 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 right so that wasn't my first part of choice as well mm-hmm. it wasn't part of my choice even mm-hmm. right so having accounting is really important running businesses mm-hmm. I think what make it the check and balances mm-hmm. right like managing the cash flow being forecasting mm-hmm. going for investors and things like that those are all bits and pieces that build up a company mm-hmm. right if I was not the one that took taken accounting mm-hmm. i think my business would be in a worse position mm-hmm. for ha- not having understanding the fundamental of business right it's about making money right it's about mm-hmm. checking the balances make sure you pay the payroll on time mm-hmm. make sure you get your supplier money comes in mm-hmm. and make sure you pay your supplier mm-hmm. make sure your clients pay you on time and things like that right mm-hmm. so those are the nitty gritties but it's the fundamental that helped me to build my business and make it all along the way to now right Okay. Uh, well, now I want to ask one uh, spicy question to <laughs> oh, both of you. Not too spicy, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your view on people's perception uh, that we should stick to our expertise and not detour from what have been taught, uh, Mr. Justin? Uh, maybe you can start. First? Finally, he's first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So again, I think like uh, Dinesh, Dinesh mm-hmm. made a good point there, right? Is it detour mm-hmm. or is it about making being adaptive? Right now, a lot of people look into IT as a field, mm-hmm. but IT isn't just a field. IT is pretty much in any single way, right? Mm-hmm. Going from grab food is IT. Mm-hmm. Going from messages, right? How mm-hmm. the banks reach out to us and things. Mm-hmm. IT is pretty much into all the fields right now. Mm-hmm. So it's not really detour. It's about making adaptive to it, mm-hmm. right? So questions about how 
they actually uh, get adaptive into different areas, mm -hmm. right? I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Dinesh made a good choice here, mm -hmm. going from accounting, understanding mm -hmm. how he can use his knowledge mm -hmm. there and build something a little bit different shader there, mm -hmm. which is the IT skills. I think those are really good example. Mm -hmm. Dinesh is a life example, I would say. Mm -hmm. Same thing, I mean, uh, from our side itself, a lot of times that clients come to us, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, it's about the problems they have, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a clients doing in printing, there's a printing and for bank statements and credit card statements and things. Mm -hmm. uh, the company have been there for 30 years, mm -hmm. three decades, right? Uh, but printing has been slowly fade away, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. people don't used to receive bank statements right, right now, right? No, so, mm -hmm. so that's where we look into how IT could really help them bring them to the next era, mm -hmm. next generations, mm -hmm. what to do next, right? Mm -hmm. About uh, going to email, we're talking about omni-channel, mm -hmm. SMS, delivery, mm -hmm. we're talking about even bots, chatbots and things like mm -hmm. that reaching your customers much more real time instead of once a month, right? <laughs> Sending your bills to <laughs> once a month <laughs> and then it got lost halfway, <laughs> things like that. So I think <laughs> those are really interesting and mm -hmm. adapting IT in mm -hmm. different field mm -hmm. was really everybody is pushing forward. Mm -hmm. I think now it's really about not just adopting it, mm -hmm. but how you leverage on the data of it, mm -hmm. right? Especially now it's really <laughs> Data are booming, data are booming, right? You are in IT where you know data are booming. Mm -hmm. Too much data, uh, but you don't get analytics off of it. Mm -hmm. I think that's really the next step we are we're talking about. Okay, uh, what is your opinion okay, on what students, uh, maybe fresh graduates are also watching this mm. session today. So what should they do uh, to take this big step? Uh, well, I would say it is a <laughs> big step because yeah. it's not easy for everyone from a different career to to change into something new mm. yeah so uh mr dinesh maybe you could go first okay let's see um <coughs> hold on huh? okay <laughs> so for starters right first of all you got to stop looking at it as a big step right. mm -hmm. i think it's not a big step mm -hmm. i think it's supposed to be a necessary step mm -hmm. it's very important because simple you have to survive mm -hmm. if uh, earlier your earlier question is like mm -hmm. stick to your role of expertise mm -hmm. I would say your expertise is based on your experience. Mm -hmm. Your experience is based on your exposure. Mm -hmm. So it grows as you grow forward. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, it's a necessary step. Like example, mm -hmm. um, you might not know that. What if today we just sit and talk to our abang camera behind mm -hmm. there? He would educate us more about his industry, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the cost of setting up this entire thing. Mm -hmm. So that's when then you realize, oh, wow, my experience increase. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, St we should stop looking at it as a big step. Like, there's no such thing as that one certificate that can open doors for you. No. Like, see, Justin is an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it carefully, all of us are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. right. We sell ourselves. We sell, put ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. we, we say that, you know, uh, this is me. I'm Dinesh Ganesan. Okay, this is my value. This is what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So you are an entrepreneur for yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's because you don't see it as a big step. I consider it as mm -hmm. a necessary step. Mm -hmm. If you don't see it and you consider working behind, from what I know, I can be corrected, but you'll always be behind. True. Put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. So if you're asking me about expertise, yeah. If you look at your degree, your degree is just a mere foundation. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. You can't move mountains with just your degree alone. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You have to meet people. You know, you got you to... Gotta understand people mm -hmm. so your degree is just like okay spark the fire that's mm -hmm. it nothing more but it's you okay what about you um Mr. Justin? yeah it's definitely not a big step right mm -hmm. i mean you're using grab food now mm -hmm. order your food <laughs> it's on it you are texting your boyfriend and girlfriends on mm -hmm. messengers whatsapp it's mm -hmm. on it this is they it's part of our daily life mm -hmm. right you just have to be a little more cautious and understanding the things behind it, right? Mm -hmm. What makes the changes of going out to take away for food mm -hmm. and what makes grab food comes into the pictures mm -hmm. and make you part of a daily life, right? Mm -hmm. Daily life. What what transitions happen in between? Mm -hmm. You gotta question yourself, right? When you use you have to be curious, you have to question mm -hmm. yourself always. Uh, what are the reasons behind mm -hmm. that these things move, right? This is make a good point there. I mean like university's paper is certification is just uh, openness, right? Mm -hmm. To the big white world out mm -hmm. there. So as you stay curious, you find different things. And in the end of the day, now we're talking about IT, but 50 years forward, we might not talk about IT. Mm -hmm. We might talk about the next big thing by mm -hmm. then. And that's always how you be stay curious. Don't just think about what the experts say. Mm -hmm. Think about, sometimes experts can be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But think about it, right? Question mm -hmm. yourself. 
mm. understand the cycle, uh, the business, the justification behind mm. it, and make your own point, right? Mm. Yeah. So I think that's really about challenging challenges. I like that. Yeah. Okay, meaning that uh, you guys encourage student or starters uh, to be brave and not become a chicken pea, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, right. I okay. would say um, not only that, mm-hmm. but question is everything. You can't mm-hmm. stop questioning. But the moment you stop questioning, you stop learning. Mm-hmm. Mm. True. So, m- if you want me to uh, base base back to your question, right? So, mm-hmm. if you want me to tell something to students like this, don't be afraid to ask your questions, True. because mm. I- it tells more about the person that answers your question. If they snub you off, it shows that they're not willing to share. Mm-hmm. But if they're sharing, then it shows you gain a new friend. Mm-hmm. So either way, it's a win-win situation. Mm-hmm. So look at it that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what are the pros and cons uh, of your current job scope that is quite dissimilar to your educational training? It can be any, <laughs> can be any <laughs> pros and cons. Okay, um, Mr. Justin, yeah, any so entrepreneur? Uh, I don't see it as a con. I <laughs> just always see it as uh, balancing the risks and rewards, mm-hmm. right? So uh, it's definitely different from what I study. Mm-hmm. A big part of it, I would mm-hmm. say, probably. 95% of it are mm-hmm. different from what I studies. Mm-hmm. And in fact, even if I'm in the accounting world, I find that probably what my university teach me or taught mm-hmm. me would be also like 50% different from what I go mm-hmm. into the world outside, the uh, mm-hmm. working world, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not a disadvantageous. Mm-hmm. It's just about exploring myself, mm-hmm. learning new things, connecting mm-hmm. with new people, Correct. understanding mm-hmm. how the new world works mm-hmm. and making the next assumptions that when you question yourself, find out the next t- key things and push that forward True. right okay but uh what is your opinion could you repeat the question again oh, okay <laughs> uh, what are the pros and cons uh of your current job scope uh, okay. which uh, it is quite dissimilar from what okay. you studied back then i like to start with cons first <laughs> so for starters i don't think i was ever prepared to do <laughs> it audit or <laughs> risk <laughs> management <laughs> today i was never prepared <laughs> but um the, that's the con side you know mm-hmm. the in being that position you'll understand one thing which is would you want to continue or mm-hmm. would you just want to you know just tender your resignation <laughs> find another job there's always a company waiting to hire someone with bookkeeping mm-hmm. that's always so um, that's the con side because mm-hmm. it's an individual decision mm-hmm. so probably some would pick okay you know what we got to do this and some would pick no what i want to go back to my roots mm-hmm. but you can't discriminate either because we need both sides of the yeah. team So for me it's like you know even the person say he's uh, let's say he doesn't want to do risk management so mm-hmm. it's okay mm-hmm. probably he wants to do accounting and we need him mm-hmm. we cannot say that oh useless you're a quitter no mm-hmm. la come on can't do that mm-hmm. but the other side so it's a balance mm-hmm. but the pro is if you learn to swim mm-hmm. you'll be surprised with the results mm-hmm. well i started swimming at the age <laughs> of 23 and here i am today <laughs> good swimmer <laughs> huh? good swimmer I would say average I can float well so <laughs> it's it's halfway there. <laughs> so because of that that's the pro. So mm-hmm. and one of the best thing that I have learned is networking. Mm-hmm. Oh it's one of the best things working. True. I think I prefer work as a, a working adult life apart from the taxes though. Um mm-hmm. in the adulthood. But mm-hmm. I I love the being an adult because the ability to connect with people mm-hmm. it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Having uni is so what I didn't because yeah lah, do it ibu bapa. <laughs> so you only g- are limited to that mm-hmm. small portion of it. Mm-hmm. But now when you're working, you're like, okay, you know what? I can do this. Like example, when I meet Justin, I'll say, okay, bro, let's go out for coffee together. Mm-hmm. No, let's go out makan together like that. Mm-hmm. Then we sit and talk. So you have the luxury of time. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about failing and disappointing people. Mm-hmm. So all of this together, I think it's a pro for me. Mm-hmm. So just for me, simple lah. Uh, uh, It's either you jump or you don't jump. Choice is yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned about networking just now, Mr. Dino. Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, uh, can you share more? I mean, your opinion, since we all know, LinkedIn is for making uh, new connections, right? So what are your takes that students should have, students or anyone should have at least a LinkedIn account? Because I think most of the students nowadays do not take it seriously. I mean, do not sign up <laughs> for <laughs> LinkedIn because the only thing LinkedIn uh, is a platform to find a job on. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think, okay, based on LinkedIn, you are yes. you focusing on LinkedIn alone? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, networking that you can create on LinkedIn. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. I would not limit to LinkedIn. Again, mm-hmm. I'm trying to break the bubble. Mm-hmm. So like earlier to the earlier questions like you know, area of expertise mm-hmm. so following on. If mm-hmm. you notice we keep lumping ourselves in a bubble. True. I think we should break that. Mm. Yeah. So LinkedIn is just more of a starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you utilize it is up to you. Mm-hmm. That's it. So mm-hmm. LinkedIn yes, it's necessary for students, but of course, mm-hmm. if you ask me for students, okay, if I were to tell you what to do mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, very simple. Of course, you just have to see your career jump mm-hmm. start. Imagine where you would be 15, 10 to 15 years from now. Perhaps you can connect with the person on LinkedIn, yeah. but please don't go and straight away say hello. <laughs> but instead, show them some appreciation in the mm-hmm. sense that before you question them, I think you should write down your question first. Mm. See, is it valid? Okay. Then talk. Have a, a connecting session. Mm-hmm. Um, understand their job scope mm-hmm. and don't don't take advantage of their time respect no matter he can be just a senior exec or just an exec mm-hmm. in the company but of course if you show him some form of appreciation mm-hmm. he would guide you mm-hmm. okay uh, actually we have a speech from a uh, vice president of student and Ac- experience and entrepreneurship uh, development and a video on y- yayasan university multimedia so let's take a look Hello, Pemata Dunia, our gems of the world. I'm Professor Wong Eng Kiong, the Vice President of Student Experience, Entrepreneurship and Development at the University, or simply known as VPC in short. As we all know, education has become a privileged opportunity day by day. Many are ambitious and wish to acquire education at world-class providers such as multimedia university. Yet, not all can afford to do so. In MMU, many of our students came from B40 families. They struggle to continue their education, even with many who have come forward to donate and contribute due to the challenging times like the pandemic COVID-19 that we experience now. The number of underprivileged keep growing. We need to support these aspiration aspiring young leaders. We need to help to guarantee that education is not only for the privileged. We need to help so that education is sustained. in our country therefore i would like to urge all alumni to commit to a campaign of donating 10 ringgit a month or 120 ringgit a year this amount to only about 33 cents a day this 33 cents may not mean much to some of us but this could secure a better future for many of the students in need we thank the alumni who have made the contributions thus far and we hope you will continue doing so We also continue that you could spread the word and encourage fellow alumni to do their parts in helping out with their juniors. Keep sharing our promotions on our website and social media. Follow Permata Dunia Facebook and Instagram for daily updates on alumni, MMU hopes and aspiration. Each day has become a challenge for us and we expect greater challenges in the future. I personally hope that alumni could become MMU pillar of support in many many years to come. Other than contributing to 10 ringgit per month, alumni can also come forward to participate in development of the university, uh, in helping to design the curriculum to become industry advisors and so on. And this will help to build the university to greater height. The university, thank you to those who have supported us and welcome those who have who have just joined in our mission. Thank you and wish you all the best.
We are back and thank you for staying with us. So we have a special announcement from ASI University Multimedia. To those who endow 120 ringgit for the full year, will get a chance to win a gift from ASI University Multimedia. A flask that we have uh, on the table. Please refer to the bottom of the screen for the bank account and phone number. Don't forget to write alumni at the reference section when you bank in uh, the endowment. Do share this campaign and don't forget to endow. Okay. Uh, now let's continue with Mr. Dinesh. Uh, okay. Do you enjoy <laughs> what you are doing now even though you kind of went detour okay. <laughs> in your career? Okay. Can I cry? No, I'm joking. Um, for starters, I do enjoy up mm -hmm. to today. Mm -hmm. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy every minute of it. And that was my motivation when I mm -hmm. left MMU. I see not graduated, lah, huh? not left mm -hmm. it, still here. <laughs> but yeah, that's my motivation for it today. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, perhaps you can check with me uh, 10 years from now if I still enjoy my career or not. <laughs> but for now, I, I am. I have a, I'm blessed to have a good team, mm -hmm. uh, good company. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lovely environment. So all you have to just work lah. So okay. of course I enjoy. Uh, one serious question. Uh, did you cry? Uh, you want me to cry now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm, what about you, Mr. Justin? Uh, do you find uh, it interesting with the field that you are in now in your business and stuff? Yeah. So I don't just enjoy my, my things. Right? I love <laughs> my, what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> so I mean like uh, I have great teammates, mm -hmm. my partners, my colleagues that work along with me, mm -hmm. different people from different fields, not mm -hmm. all of them from MMU, mm -hmm. but different people from different fields. That's mm -hmm. where I get to know them, mm -hmm. work with them, understanding them and helping mm -hmm. them and also they're helping us. Mm -hmm. So we have good supportive clients, we mm -hmm. have good supporting partners and things mm -hmm. like that. And I really enjoy loving, <laughs> loving my job, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Okay, uh, we would like uh, for both of you to give uh, an advice, <laughs> a, just a piece of advice for students uh, that are watching right now. So, uh, Mr. Jansin, yeah. uh, can you give uh, an advice to those who study a field but have passion in another field? Yeah, I mm -hmm. think if you study a field and you have passion for it, mm -hmm. uh, for another field itself, mm -hmm. um, definitely still understand the field well. Mm -hmm. That's always a thing that you need to master. Mm -hmm. And also, but be open, be mm -hmm. always open and then to be curious about exploring new fields. Mm -hmm. So, that's always good to merge both fields together. I think that's so much more that can mm -hmm. be done when you have no two things. You mm -hmm. are so much more out of in advantage mm -hmm. as compared to people knowing just one skill, right? Mm -hmm. You are now a master of skills, of multiple skills, mm -hmm. right? Being resourceful again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, for Mr. Dinesh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> can you share more to those who study a field but worrying that the job opportunity is very limited uh, for the field that they are currently studying? Okay, let's see. Okay, I'll put it this way. Mm -hmm. First of all, Ask yourself, why are you worrying? Mm -hmm. Because there's, you're not uh, ignorant enough to worry about it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get to the bottom of it. You ask yourself this, mm -hmm. why would I worry? Mm -hmm. So are you worrying because society is making you worry? <laughs> <laughs> or are yeah, you yeah. worried because you don't see a reason for you to mm -hmm. contribute mm -hmm. in the future? Then after that, ask yourself, how do you reach your goal? Like, mm -hmm. What makes you worry? Are you worried that probably the age of 30 you want to be earning 10k salary a month <laughs> it's possible it's mm -hmm. possible so the question is if you are going to worry about that okay then that convert that worry into strategy yeah. mm -hmm. step by step if like to even if i were to relate to your question to justin right mm -hmm. it's student in different field and one do something yeah. i would say this plan your transition process mm -hmm. have an idea and just mm -hmm. go with it that's it. Um, whatever come in the way, right? Just don't care. You you know, end of the day, you want to earn 10k a month. Mm -hmm. then just go for it. Why are you stopping? Uh, acquire knowledge. As you go, you meet people. Learn. Make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I would say for students, mm -hmm. from the age of 23 to 28, your salary is not that important. It is important mm -hmm. though, um, but focus on experience. Focus on learning. Focus on meeting people. Um, that's the most thing, important thing I would say for them. Mm -hmm. Don't have to worry too much about it. But if you're worried, ask yourself why. That's mm -hmm. that's why I will always look at it. Why you're scared? Are you scared because you know other reasons? 
Mm-hmm. That's more important. Don't just sit there and whimper around, cry around like, mm-hmm. "Oh, I'm scared." No. Ask yourself why. Because mm-hmm. do you want to cry every day? No, of course <laughs> not, right? You want to fight it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's gonna be a point you're gonna cry. If you cry every day, there's gonna be a point it's gonna dry mm-hmm. out. No water in the body. <laughs> so until then, find a transition. Mm. I would say have a good transition process. Mm-hmm. Your transition should go from here to here. It's mm-hmm. okay. Link it. You craft your journey. No one else. That's a very Thank good you. advice, actually, for, uh, coming from both of you. So uh, we have come to the end of our talk. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, actually, we have questions uh, from the audience. Oh. So do you mind if I sure, ask sure. you a few questions? Okay. Uh, the first question is, should personal experience from voluntary self-projects be more valued than the professional's one? that you do from your job experience uh maybe mr dinesh sorry uh could you repeat the question okay. uh, should personal experience from voluntary self projects be more valued than the professional ones uh that you do from your job experience it depends on how you see value as a person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i would not say that there's no value or there is value but mm-hmm. to me there is value still mm-hmm. because when you volunteer you are volunteering for experience again back to what i said earlier mm-hmm. your experience grow you grow your experience mm-hmm. don't grow you don't grow belum cuba belum tahu yeah so i think i think it's really important i mean mm-hmm. i go through a lot of resumes mm-hmm. on a weekly or daily basis right mm-hmm. uh, of course we want to know about the professionals mm-hmm. experience but your volunteer experience tell us a little bit more about you let's say if both candidates hold a certain degree mm-hmm. a same certification from same universities mm-hmm. they hold a pretty same uh, job experience and things but if one which f a uh, voluntary experience mm-hmm. would be a plus point to for me to relate to him better to for me to understand this person better before even i talk to him before mm-hmm. even i want to interview him this guy so i think it's always a plus point right mm-hmm. yeah. okay uh when the pandemic hit last year mm. so many of us has lost uh, their jobs so some business are shutting down yes, and what is your advice to those who are try to turn their life around Mm. Um, suggested right mm-hmm. so <laughs> it, it's like it's when it comes to problem is you can turn into opportunities mm-hmm. right uh, we we are in the business of uh, changing we are business in helping businesses to transform mm-hmm. and that's also where the opportunities comes right mm-hmm. so when pandemic hits we have some clients that feel like okay they need to invest less on mm-hmm. transformations mm-hmm. but there's also with clients with different mindset they feel like this is the right opportunities mm-hmm. they have been waiting for this time to really to fight and then to go on with market leaders that's where they wanted to invest more in transformations mm-hmm. so i think it's about the perceptions and don't how i see it mm-hmm. and i think that's really nice to have this it's, it's not nice to mm-hmm. have this pandemic but mm-hmm. it's really nice to see it in a positive way mm-hmm. that you could make an impact and make a transformation mm-hmm. during these times so what about you mr dinesh what is your take on this um it's very unfortunate so mm-hmm. i can't compare True. for me pain is pain mm-hmm. problem is problem mm-hmm. i don't compare it mm-hmm. but um like what justin said there's opportunity and mm-hmm. during this time i say that we have a lot of opportunity to grow because uh, the government is giving a lot of uh, free classes for people to upskill themselves to stay mm-hmm. relevant and i've seen a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. running their own consulting agency where they're giving free classes on how to transition from a manual business to mm-hmm. automated business mm-hmm. so the question is we have to look for mm-hmm. it or ask around that's why mm-hmm. the power of networking comes in again mm-hmm. if you want to do it do it so mm-hmm. it's not easy it's a mm-hmm. tough it's a tough challenge for everyone mm-hmm. um you have both worlds here one who's being 9 to 5 job and then mm-hmm. one who decides when he works mm-hmm. i would say correct work 24/7 ah uh, see <laughs> so either way, either way you work either way you work So if you are going to hit me on the fact that I work 9 to 5 then probably you have to know that after 5 what I do is an investment. Mm-hmm. Right. True. So all of this in mind I think my my take would be use your network. Mm-hmm. You'll be surprised with the opportunities out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Malaysians are really kita jaga kita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh Mr. Justin, uh, we actually have question for you. Mm-hmm. So if we switch to another course, how do we choose which new course is suited for us? So do you recommend everyone to change their direction then? Uh <laughs> it's really a case by case basis, <laughs> I would say. Uh mm-hmm. I mean we definitely don't want to know more who who is it. I, we could talk further. <laughs> But mm-hmm. generally, uh I think Dinesh mentioned just ask yourself why mm-hmm. why you wanted to make a shift. 
-hmm. Is it because of peer pressure? Is it because of uh, the society is asking mm -hmm. you to do so? Your parents asking you to do so? And then it, you can question a lot of things, people questioning mm -hmm. you, but also around how you make answer those questions, mm -hmm. right? If after a list of questions, you found that, mm, I wanted to make a shift, you mm -hmm. decided you want to make a shift, mm -hmm. right? Uh, again, list down the steps, mm -hmm. talk to your counselors, talk to your lecturers mm -hmm. and things, talk to some of the industry expert if mm -hmm. you can, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you are passionate in IT, talk to someone in IT, right? Okay. I could help if you are in IT, mm -hmm. but if your passion is ethical hacking, talk to Dinesh, <laughs> Dinesh could help, right? I'm so of it. understanding from someone in the field is really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. So you want to know that whether this match your expectations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that would be important. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have come to the end of our talk. Uh, what a fruitful session we had just now. Uh, and I believe it will be useful to all future graduates and students who attend the session today. Uh, but before we leave, I would like to say many thanks to Mr. Dinesh and Mr. Justin for being here and sharing with us about changing field and we learn a lot from this session. Uh, with that, goodbye, stay safe, practice social distancing uh, and enjoy the rest of your week. I'm Wan Izian and thank you for watching.